Uh, John Howard, you and Peter Costello served up your last big tax cut only a few months ago. Uh, that did nothing to shift public opinion. Why is this one going to save you, Bacon? Well, I'm not going to talk about opinion poll reaction, but... That's convenient. About, uh, uh, well, well, of course. Well, I'm not going to. OK, whether it's convenient or not, that's my position. Uh, what we are doing today uh, is to return to the Australian people the proceeds of a larger than expected surplus over the next three years... And we're doing it in a way that is targeted to increase incentives for workforce participation. We're doing it in a way that will add to the incentive for people to stay in the workforce. And it's particularly beneficial uh, for women with children in the part-time workforce because the most amazing statistic to come out of this plan is that by 2010, 65% of women with children in the part-time workforce will be on a marginal tax rate of no more than 15%. So it is a, a real plan. And uh, we hear a lot about working families. Well, this is directed very much at assisting working families and it recognises that some working families are under cost of living pressures. I've never denied that. Um, uh, the whole economy is doing well. But I understand that a lot of working families are under cost of living pressure. The best way to help them is to give them back their taxes and let them decide how they're going to spend that money. Well, that $34 billion uh, over the next three years will be funded substantially from growth, what well, it'll be funded from growth in the economy. But in truth, uh, these cuts wouldn't be possible without the resources boom and China's insatiable hunger for our minerals. Now, it's not something that you can really take credit for, is it? The resources boom and China's minerals needs. Well, that's not the only reason why we have bigger surpluses, Kerry. But that's it's a very substantial one, isn't no, it? No, no, well, it is part of the reason, but another reason uh, is that we have lower unemployment. And when you have lower unemployment, you have more people in the workforce paying tax. But, but and you part of the fewer, reason you've got the lower unemployment people, is because no, of the resources boom taking no, no, up more that's jobs. Only, but, but, Kerry, that's only part of the reason. Um, the growth in the service sector of the economy has been much, much greater in, for example, financial services, much, much greater. In hospitality, recreation and the like has been much, much greater than the resources sector. This is a glib one-liner to say that our wealth is entirely due to the resources boom. It's an insult also to the contribution that many people in other sectors of the economy have made to our economic growth. So I reject entirely the argument that it's all about China. But in any event, there is no reason why properly managed this country shouldn't continue to sell enormous amounts of resources to nations like China. And because we have a good relationship with China, a relationship that my critics said I could never develop when I first became Prime Minister, we are in a very strong position. So let's not be negative and pessimistic about our relationship with China and coming on stream India and bear in mind Japan has been a faithful customer of Australia in resources now for 40 years. So presumably, so these if long, these, so presumably we've got, a, we've got a, a limited amount of time, Mr Howard, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'd I like realise that, but I mean, you, but you are going to the core of what is a false argument about our economic strength. It is quite fallacious for people to argue that the only reason this economy is booming is because of resources. Resources are gratefully a big part, but there's more to the economic merit that Australia's been over the last 10 years and the resources boom. Presumably, if these tax cuts are responsible on your part, it would be equally responsible if Kevin Rudd uh, endorsed the tax cuts under, under his own government or came up with a similar amount of cuts uh, with a slightly different mechanism. But, but if they're responsible well, for know. you, presumably mm. they're responsible for him. Well, I don't know what Mr Rudd's going to do. That's a matter for him. Uh, yep. uh, he, he claims to be an economic conservative. I imagine, therefore, he believes in lower tax, and I'm sure he'll say later on in the program he does believe in lower tax. But, look, what Mr Rudd does is Mr Rudd's business. OK, and well, we'll, we will come I'll to comment. him in a moment. We'll, but... we'll leave him out of it for the okay. moment. You've already had five years of tax cuts. Uh, this will make mm. it eight, this package. If mm. you've been so flush with money for so long, why have you allowed education spending in Australia to decline comparative to most other developed countries from pre-primary schooling right through to universities as the OECD demonstrated last month? Yeah, well, we, we dispute those figures because they don't include the measures that were in the budget 
They stopped at about 2004 or 2005. They don't include the Higher Education Fund, which is worth about $6 billion. They don't include the additional spending that we've committed to technical education. So I dispute those OECD figures. But they, but they do uh, reflect the, well, first sorry, eight, they they do reflect the first eight years of your government's priorities yeah, well, I'm, on I'm education, sorry, yeah, don't I mean, they? Well, Kerry, Kerry, if you're asking me to be accountable for my government, let me be accountable right up to date. Well, let me, let me go saying... to the, to the mm. last budget then. There are those who say, mm. yes, you, you did find some more money for higher education in the last budget, but only after Kevin Rudd put it on the agenda this year. Well, 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 well Kerry, he didn't put a higher education fund with $5 billion on the agenda. He put a slogan on the agenda, an education revolution. Well, slogans are easy and they're costless. We put a $5 billion fund for higher education and it was widely acclaimed by the university sector. We have also uh, broken new ground with our Australian technical colleges and we're establishing, what, 25 to 28 of those and as a result, a number of the states, and I welcome this, have brought back dedicated technical schools. We've also introduced uh, these training vouchers and they're going like hotcakes and that enables people already in the workforce to upgrade their skills because surprisingly enough, a very large number of people in the Australian workforce do not have the equivalent of, 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 of year 12 uh, education qualification. So I just reject that OECD report okay. as being well, as stopping short of, 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 of what is up to date. Well, another, another policy area, <laughs> if you've been so flush with money, why have you allowed the Commonwealth's share of spending on public hospitals to uh, shrink quite dramatically over your time in office, as your Health Minister acknowledged just over a week ago, responding to figures from the government's <coughs> own Institute of Health and Welfare? Well, Kerry, if you look at all hospital, if you look at all hospital spending, you look at all health spending, it hasn't declined. It's more than doubled in the time that I've been in government. And but I would do, argue, but in, you do have to acknowledge I would the argue decline in, relation, in the Commonwealth's share of public hospitals. Well, well, the the amount that we've put into public hospitals has grown. The states have put more money in over the last few years. Some states have put a lot more in. Queensland has put a lot more in. Other states have put not so much more in. One of the reasons they've been able to do this is they've got more money from the GST. See, what, what people forget when they do these Commonwealth state comparisons is they, they leave out the fact that on average about 45% of every state budget in the case of Tasmania, it's 60%, is funded by the Commonwealth, either through the GST uh, or by specific purpose payments. And I would say in relation to health spending, it, yes, the states uh, have been able to put more money in, and so they should. They run the hospitals. But one of the reasons they've been able to put more money in is that they get more money from the Commonwealth through the GST. And the former Queensland Premier, Peter Beattie, uh, was always acknowledging that if it hadn't been for the GST, he wouldn't have been able to spend as much on, on health and education. Kevin Rudd has predicted the mother <coughs> of all negative campaigns from the government this time, and it mm. seems uh, that, uh, that if the first night is anything to go by, you're, uh, you're doing your best to prove him right. It was Rudd and Swan, well, the, well, the on, learner drivers, in last night's mm. Liberal ads, mm. just like you portrayed Mark Latham last time. Mm. Isn't that a little tired for an opening gambit? Uh, well, well, Kerry, can I just start by saying this, that Mr Rudd has tried to define any criticism of him as some kind of personal attack. I'm not interested in personal attacks, and we all know what they are. What I am interested in is holding my opponent and his colleagues accountable for their past policy positions and their current policy attitude. You talk about negativity. What did we do today? We released a, a plan uh, for the tax system years into the future. Mr Rudd falsely claimed that if I'm re-elected, I'll change work choices and make it tougher. Well, that's wrong. I won't do anything of the kind. Now, you talk about negativity and fear... That was blatantly dishonest. He knows we're not going to do that. I've said that on many occasions. So day one, we're talking about the future and cutting people's tax. OK. Uh, Mr Rudd is making up fables about uh, our intentions on industrial relations. Mr Howard, we're out of time. I look forward to the next of these. Thank you. I'm sure.